Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we've got a very exciting tutorial going over the tips and tricks on how to take a successful oil on water photograph. Be sure to stick around to the end to learn a very special technique that takes these images to the next level. So let's get started. All right, the first step in this process is actually going to be to find or create the gradients that we're gonna be using as our background images. This process can be a little lengthy and difficult if you don't already know how to use the gradient process in Photoshop. So I'm creating a step-by-step -step guide on how to create those yourself up here. I'll also be including a link in the description below where you can download a few of the gradients that I've created for this tutorial absolutely free. All right, once we've created or downloaded our gradients and we've got them sent over to our tablet, we can go ahead and start setting everything up. We're going to get our tablet set on the table. Then I'll set the camera, making sure the image on the iPad completely fills the frame. We'll need to set up the glass sheet that will hold our vessel. Be careful not to use anything that will break and fall onto your tablet. Then you'll need to locate a decent sized clear glass vessel that has as flat of a base as possible. Since we are going to be placing water over the tablet, you may consider wrapping it a couple of times in a clear, clean film so it doesn't get destroyed. We will be filling this vessel up about halfway in order to see where the water is and get an actual frame and focus point. Again, making sure this isn't too heavy for the glass you're lifting it up with. For our camera's settings, we'll be using an aperture of 5.6, a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second, and an ISO of 1200. I found that this exposure works really well for me, but your camera settings may vary depending on the phone or tablet that you're using. You may want to consider turning the auto dimming feature of your phone or tablet to off, because it can be a real pain having to constantly log back in and out every time it goes off. It's also important to note that with these camera settings, any other lights that are on in your room will appear around the edges of the bubbles while you photograph them. This could be an interesting effect, but if you don't want them, make sure all of your other lights are turned off while you're photographing. Before we can begin adding our oil, we'll want to dip the end of our syringe into some degreasing dish soap and gently swirl it around on the top of the water, making sure not to make any bubbles. If you don't do this, the oil bubbles will be much flatter across the surface, losing the desired contrast and light refraction around the edges. They will also begin to merge with one another as soon as they touch, making composing our images very difficult, if not impossible. So this is kind of a fun effect. As you add the soap for the first time, the bubbles sort of explode outward. But when I bring them back into frame, you can see that now the edges are much more clearly defined and are refracting light the exact way we need them to. Now that we have everything set up, we can begin to add our oil drops. This is where the syringe becomes really important. It allows us to easily move the bubbles around so we can begin composing our image. Also, without it, we wouldn't have direct control over the size of the bubbles. We can continuously add to the size if we want them bigger or reverse the process to reduce the size even eliminating the bubbles completely if we don't need them. Just be sure to discard anything that you take back out of the vessel into a separate container so it doesn't contaminate the surface of the water. All right, these bubbles actually look pretty good right here, so I'm gonna start exploring the different gradients that I've created to see which different types of effects we can get. I'm just going to filter through some of these so you can see the effect just using a different color palette can have on these images in real time. If you're going to be making your own gradients, you may want to consider using complementary colors to help add depth and contrast to your images. All right, so I've been playing around with these smooth, simple gradients for a while, and while I like the simplicity and calmness these images have, I would really like to try making a few gradients that are rounded off and have a more pronounced edge so we can see what kind of an effect that has on our images. These gradients were offering a much more interesting result, but I still felt like there was more that we could do to further refine the image. So I began to experiment and I ended up making a gradient that had a single island of color. I was really excited by these results and initially thought I had discovered exactly what I was searching for. However, after an hour of playing around with different color combinations, I discovered that I could intentionally position the oil over the gradients directly. That's when I stumbled upon this composition. 
From there, I spiraled out of control, and two minutes later, I was attempting to scale and line up two separate gradient islands, which gave us the result we see in the thumbnail for this episode. A few minutes later, I had refined my 49th gradient, the last one finally settling on a third and final island. While filming this episode, I was reminded again and again why I fell in love with photography to begin with. These images can be a little difficult to take, but the process of making them is really fun and the results are even greater. All right, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. If you liked what you saw and learned something today, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. It goes a long way to help me continue to make content for you guys. Also, if you'd like to know how to make the gradients you saw in this episode or how I edit these images, click on either of these two links now.